Hello and welcome. I'm Ben Richards, the Business and Communication Librarian at Cleveland State University. This tutorial will be an introduction to four key business databases that you will use on various assignments and projects in your time in the Business College. By the end of this tutorial, you will be able to describe the kinds of information available from business databases, choose which database to use for what kind of information, articulate how you could use each database, and explain some fundamental concepts related to business databases and business research. First, let's talk about why you might need to use these databases. Business is all about making decisions. As with any decision, it's critical to be informed, as your decisions will have consequences. Whether you are launching a new product, investing in the stock market, or just implementing a new process, it's important to understand the environment that your decision is taking place in, consider what's already known, and then proceed with evidence to back your decision. There are specific sources of information for different types of needs that people in business use on a regular basis. There are reports that summarize trends within specific industries. There's a wealth of information available on companies that trade stock publicly, and even business directories with information on smaller private companies. People in business read specialized publications for their positions or industries, which keep them up to date on best practices and innovations. All of this is available through databases that the library and you have access to. These databases don't contain all the answers. Rather, they provide you with information that you can use to make the best decision possible. There are some basic categories of the kinds of information you might look for. They are industry analysis and data, company information, general or industry specific news and trends, and market research. Industry information or industry reports refer to growth and revenue trends, average profit margins, information about how an in industry operates internally and how competition is structured, as well as information about product and market segmentation. Company information refers to information about specific companies. For some companies, like public companies, it can be easy to find detailed financial reports and analysis, executives, and even internal evaluations of their strategy and performance. For smaller companies and any private company, there are less regulations on information they have to report, and oftentimes companies will guard this information from being publicly available. Industry news or trade publications offer up-to-date insight into trends occurring within a specific area of business, region, or profession. These publications help you keep up-to-date on competitors, innovations, market trends, and proven practices which can yield success. Market research can refer to industry or company data, but it's often focused on consumer or customer behavior and preferences and demographics. It's often very expensive when not coming from a nonprofit organization or government agency. The library has some general sources, but we'll focus on the other three categories in this video. Let's look at an industry report first. Industry reports can vary greatly in their structure depending on who's writing them. However, they will have a few key characteristics. They describe business patterns within a specific industry category. This could be very broad, like the manufacturing sector, or it could be very specific, like coffee shops. Oftentimes, industry reports will use an industry classification system, like NAICS or NAICS, to specify with great accuracy what kinds of businesses are being included in the report. Many other business databases also use NAICS to tag and search for content. Typically, an industry report covers business patterns within a specific time frame, quarterly, annually, or maybe biannually or longer, and for a specific geography. This could include statewide, national, or international reports. IBIS World reports are written at the five-digit NAICS level, which means they are pretty specific in the industry that they are discussing. Our subscription is for the national reports, so revenues and other data cited is for the United States as a whole. Typically, an industry report will review external trends that impact businesses, as well as internal developments within the industry. 
To access IBISWorld, go to library.csuohio.edu and click on Research Databases. Then navigate to the I category and click IBISWorld. If you're off campus, you'll have to enter your library PIN. In IBISWorld, you can either search by keyword or browse. I'd like to look at a report on coffee shops. I can search coffee shop, or I know that the report will be listed under accommodation and food services, and I can see that there is a report for coffee and snack shops in the United States. In an IBIS World report, there is an about section where the industry is defined and an infographic shows how the industry is connected to others. On the industry at a glance page, there's an overview and executive summary of the industry trends. On the industry performance page, there's a discussion of current trends within the last five years. And the industry outlook page covers projected trends for the next five years. You'll notice anytime you see a table and a green Excel icon, you can export the data to an Excel spreadsheet. On the products and markets page, revenue is segmented by product type or service type, as well as market segment. This can be useful to learn what types of products or services are generated by the industry and how they're segmented by revenue, as well as how revenue is segmented by demand from different markets. The Competitive Landscape page provides information about the cost structure of the industry, key success factors, how market share is concentrated within the industry, the basis of competition, and even barriers to entering the industry. The Major Companies tab provides information about who some of the top competitors are in the industry their financial performance, and key information about trends within those companies and innovations that they are experiencing. Under operating conditions, you'll find information about the types of capital investments that have to be made, any relevant IT or systems information, revenue patterns, and government regulations and policies. On the final page, Key Statistics, there are in-depth charts with more detailed financial information and industry ratios. Just a note, anytime you see the video camera, that means that Ibis World has a short video with more information about that specific section of the report. These reports can also be downloaded as a PDF. Next, we'll look at two company databases Mergent Online and Reference USA. Mergent Online is focused on publicly traded companies, and Reference USA is more focused on private companies as well as individual branches or locations. It will be easy to use a public company database to find annual reports and financial information because public companies are required to report various pieces of information to their investors and the public. Private companies have less informa information that they have to report, so sometimes you'll be limited to sales estimates. Both types of databases will be more oriented towards whole company information as opposed to individual product lines or business units. Let's look at Mergent Online. Mergent Online is a database primarily used to find information on publicly traded companies. Because these companies are publicly traded, they are subject to regulations about what information they must disclose. Mergent Online provides easy access to financial disclosures and annual reports, as well as various other pieces of information about these companies. What's more, you can create detailed comparison reports using Merchant Online. You can research a company's strategy, financial performance, equity pricing, as well as perform more detailed industry analysis using a database like Mergent Online.
To access Mergent Online, go to library.csuohio.edu, click Research Databases, and then navigate to the J through M category. Click on Mergent Online, and remember, if you're off campus, you'll need to use your library PIN. When you open Mergent Online, you'll see a search menu. You can search the name of a company or stock ticker. Or you can enter the advanced search menu and use various different criteria to search for companies that fit your needs. Let's search for Google's holding company, Alphabet, to see what kind of information is available. I'll type in the ticker. And now we can see that there's a wealth of information available. Here you can see some basic information about the company, including a summary of its business practices, pricing information about its stock and key financial data, as well as a timeline. Information about different business segments the company is involved in, its real property holdings, subsidiary companies, as well as information about who runs the company, detailed financial reports including balance sheets, income statements, retained earnings and cash flow, stock or equity pricing information, annual reports, and even some of the company's competitors. If you'd like to create a report based off information that Merchant has on your company, you can add the company to your analysis list. And now if we go to the analysis list, we can either create a multiple company report and choose various different companies and criteria to include on the report, or create a company comparison report, which will make it easier to compare data points between companies if you've selected more than one. This report can be output as a Word document, PDF, or most useful, a Microsoft Excel document. Urgent Online is very powerful, and this brief overview is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of the information it has. Let's compare Emergent Online to Reference USA, a directory which focuses on branch locations and private companies. To access Reference USA, make sure you're at library.csuohio.edu, click Research Databases, make sure R through S is selected, and then click on Reference USA. If you're off campus, you'll have to use your library pin. When you open Reference USA, you'll notice you have a few options. Uh, there is a U.S. consumer and lifestyle database which actually has records of um, individuals living in the United States. We're just going to use the U.S. business database. Um, you can search for a company by the name or uh, a couple other fields, but normally you would be creating a list, so we'll do an advanced search. Um, and to give you an idea of the kind of information that's available through Reference USA, I'm going to do a search um, for coffee shops in Cleveland or in the Cuyahoga County area. Um, first we'll select the county. There are other geographies available as well. Um, now I want to point out what happens here. Currently there's almost 15 million records of businesses in the United States. When we update based on the criteria that we have, it's going to shrink drastically. Uh, and to limit this further, we'll use our industry code. You can use NAICS or SICK. Um, SICK is just another form of industry code. NAICS is a little bit more formalized, so it doesn't allow the same sort of specificity sometimes. If I do a search with SICK, I should be able to use that. There we are. So there's 171 coffee shops listed in this database in Cuyahoga County. I'm going to view the results. 
and looking through these, these are individual locations. So that this isn't a corporate financial directory like Merchant Online. These are individual locations and they're private companies as well as um, some public companies like Dunkin' Donuts. It's publicly owned as is Starbucks. Uh, to see the kind of information, we should look at a company record. So let's look at Joe Max. It's located near campus. Reference USA is, I like to say it's kind of like a really souped up powerful yellow pages. So in addition to basic information like where the company is located, a phone number, a website, you get things like um, what actual industries is this company operating in, uh, both a SIC code and a NAICS code that you could use. Um, what Reference USA calls business demographics. So here, you would not be able to find how many employees a company has in a regular Yellow Pages, but we can see that there's nine. Um, now it's very important to point out, you will see sales volume listed in Reference USA. Unless it's a public company and you see something under corporate sales volume, Sales numbers in Reference USA are estimates, not actual reported figures. Reference USA uses an algorithm that takes into consideration how many employees the company has, uh, the sales reported to the census for that industry, as well as geographic location. Uh, so just take these numbers with a grain of salt. It could be much higher or much lower. Um, looking further down, management information, um, and even estimated business expenditures. Again, these are just estimated. Um, so Reference USA can be really useful for comparing one company to many other companies. I wouldn't use these numbers um, to make really important decisions off of for a single location, but if you're looking at 10 or 20 or uh, 50 companies, you can kind of assume that these might average out. Uh, there's some historical information Another really cool thing that you can do in Reference USA is summarize either in a cross tab or in a chart things like sales volume and employee size. And you can also plot these on a graph or on, on a map to see the geographic distribution. Um, and if you want to, you can select multiple companies and download the records either in kind of a basic format as a summary or a custom or detailed report where you pick out what pieces of data you want outputted. Um, so Reference USA is obviously really powerful. You just need to be aware that for most cases, the actual sales figures and expenditures that are being reported are just calculations that Reference USA does um, using industry averages and then other information like number of employees and the geographic location. In addition to these somewhat standardized sources of business information, where you can expect to see the same kind of information included in a report format, there's also a wealth of news and analysis sources for the general business community and specialized publications that are read in specific industries or professions. Many of these sources are available through Business Source Complete, an aggregator database which incorporates many different publications and reports and makes them searchable through a single interface. Where industry reports and company databases are standard, they each contain generally the same information. Business news and analysis is fully contingent on an author or organization reporting on some development. Many of these sources are available through Business Source Complete, an aggregator database which incorporates many different publications and reports and makes them searchable through a single interface. Where industry reports and company databases are standard, they each contain generally the same information, business news and analysis is wholly contingent on an author or organization reporting on some development. A few examples of useful information you might find in Business Source Complete include a news story about developments in Starbucks is an investor appeal from a general business news source. An industry publication following trends in coffee bean and coffee shop branding. And an industry profile following hot drinks in a specific geographic region.
Of course, this isn't the only source of information on business topics, but it brings a host of sources into one easily searchable and organized collection for you to use. Each item in the database will be tagged with sp subject terms specific to business, like copy industry, retail industry, and branding, marketing, as well as company tags and industry tags. All of these features make Business Source Complete very easy to search. Within the search results, you can also limit by date, source type, and any of the other fields that are available. You can easily check the newest issue of a publication by clicking on the source title and then using the table of contents to navigate to the newest issue or the issue of your choosing. You can also search for a publication under the Publications tab and type in the name of the journal or magazine that you want to view. Let's take a moment to look back and review the different databases and kinds of information you might have to use. These don't account for all of the business databases that are available at the university, but it covers the basics. Remember, these databases won't contain information that tells you exactly what to do in any given situation. Rather, you'll use your growing expertise as a business professional to make decisions using this information. You can always reach out to me if you have questions about these databases or any others, or if you are having trouble finding the information that you are looking for. In some cases, the information may not be accessible through our subscriptions, but we will do the best to help you. There is a wealth of free information available through the open internet as well, but as always, you must practice careful evaluation of any information you find to be sure of its reliability and applicability for your business needs. I'm looking forward to working with you on your future business projects and good luck.